As a, as a, as a driver, is this a nice, uh, nice sequence of corners, though? Is this, this a nice sweeping S? Yes, yeah, it's, it's very nice. I think also going, corner number nine, because you have like a, a chicane here, a 90 degrees, more or less corner here, very fast, then an S, a hairpin here, a lot of different type of corners in, in one track. And so I think that is one of the things that make the Buenos Aires a, an interesting circuit, no? All right, so Brownie and I have now made it here to uh, Buenos Aires for the second leg of our South American uh, technical recce and checking out all the camera positions and meeting up with all the local operators. Eduardo and his team are in that building over there and they're the chaps that are going to show us around. Hello, Eduardo. Uh, hello, welcome to our operation office of the e Grand Prix of Buenos Aires. Lovely yeah. to meet welcome. you. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> How many people have you got working here, Eduardo? Around 10. Around 10? Yes. How long have you all been working together? No, all the year. Oh yeah, one, oh, yeah. So one year as an operation. Yes. One, year. one year operation okay. of this 10 to 12 people now. Yeah. But yeah, at the day of the EPX, all the people working is around 800. And this is my office. <laughs> oh, you're into art? Yes. yes. This is Garcia Uriburu. He's a famous artist from Argentina. Very involved with the eco. Huh? I worked several years in uh, Formula One as a manager of divers and also I am, was the director of the automobile club team in Europe in the GT1 and GT2 okay. in the championship and I work in Formula One races here also. Here I was very young and this is Juan Manuel Fangio. Oh wow, <laughs> the man himself. Yes. He's the most famous racing driver in Argentina, five times world champion of Formula One. How do you find Formula E now compared to Formula One? Obviously it's very different. It's very different, it's uh, two different things, but uh, for me it's a challenge. It's very, the project, uh, all the project of Formula E is very interesting for us because it, I think it's a new way and probably it's the future of this motorsport. In Argentina, motor racing is the second sport. First one is soccer, second one is motor racing. The people likes a lot all the motor racing and very involved in, in, in Argentina. In, in the progress, uh, we are on time, in our timetable to produce the racetrack. And f I think for the driver it's an interesting racetrack because they have fast corner, slow corner. That's why the people, it's one day of problem of the race, but with the, uh, we left there a lot of improvement of the, for the neighborhood. The checker flag falls and it's a win for Amlin Aguri. It's completely, I think it's the biggest challenge in motorsport that has been done in the last 50 years. Because, okay, even Formula One or all the championships, they have one race, let's say, in a city center. But normally the organization of that race is four years or five years before, with a huge amount of budget to do this and everything. And we have done this only in 18, 20 months. So I think it's uh, one of the most challenging things that has been made. And I, I think that also FIA agrees with that. So FIA knows exactly the difficulty of making this happen, this Formula E. From Uruguay, we've crossed the Rio de la Plata to Buenos Aires, the capital city of Argentina. It's been 17 years since the country last held top-level international single-seaters, but today the Puerto Madero street circuit will play host to the fourth round of the FIA Formula E Championship. So is this all quite new, this area? Yes, this area, all these buildings were built like 10 years ago, and it's like the new part of Buenos Aires. It's, it's for me one of the most beautiful parts of the city. Yes, here is a pit lane, pit lane exit. That part is where the pits are going to be and this is just the exit going to the main straight. This I think is one of the main over, overtaking points is after this long straight 
the, the, the main straight of, of the track. And I think it's going to be a, a, a point of action here because uh, even if you cannot overtake in, in this uh, breaking point of, of this first corner, you can probably exit uh, a little bit slower from this first corner and then you have like another big straight with this flat corner and you can arrive here with less speed and would be an, another place of, of overtake here. We are in corner number three, uh, 17 meters wide, uh, a fast corner, flat out corner and I think the fastest part of the track. This is corner number four after this long straight with this flat corner and well, this is another point to overtake. I think it's going to be this one and, and one, the one in the first corner, the, the two main points for overtake. So um, this, this last three corners here is a lovely sequence, it looks quite fast. Yes, I, I think these, these two are going to be flat, uh, but, but it's going to be interesting because it's, it's going to be flat, but only with one car uh, at a time, you know, you, you cannot do it flat with two cars aside. So it's going to be very important this, this corner number 10 to exit well to try to do this, this flat well to, to arrive with the chance to overtake in, in corner number one. What's he doing? Saying helado. What helado it? means ice cream. He want, wants to sell you an ice cream. It's a bit cold for an ice cream, <laughs> isn't it? Have dos, dos, what is it? Dos, dos chocolato. No. <laughs> as, a, as a driver, is this, is this a nice, uh, nice sequence of corners though? Is this, is this a nice sweeping S? Yeah, it's, it's very nice. I think, also corner number nine because you have like a, a chicane here, a 90 degrees more or less corner here very fast, then an S been here. It's like a lot of different type of corners in, in one track. And so I think that is one of the things that make the Buenos Aires a, an interesting circuit, no? Hunt, lovely to meet you, mate. Nice to see you. Thanks for your time, appreciate it. He comes towards the uh, final corner now. now it's victory for Antonio Felix yep. da Costa. The checker flag falls and it's a win for Amlin Aguri. I must say I'm really impressed with the amount of work that actually goes into clearly getting everything ready for a street race. I don't think people quite realise uh, how much goes into it. Um, I know that if I had a month off in between the two races, what I'd be doing is I'd be buying a motorbike, pick it up in Uruguay and then driving from there to, to the race in Argentina and really having a great time over Christmas.